You're watching KMAC Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Tip-Off. Back on Countdown to Tip-Off, Texas Tech getting set to take on the second half of Big 12 play this afternoon at 3 o'clock when they visit the Texas Longhorns. And you talk about visiting, trying to get back into those winning ways after coming up just short over the weekend at Kansas, falling to the Jayhawks by three points in Lawrence, but back home on Tuesday hosting Oklahoma and Tech taking down the Sooners in a close one at the USA. Red Raiders trailing at a halftime, but really... Closed the game strong, outscoring OU 13 to 5 in the final five minutes. It's quite important win for Chris Beard and company as they improve. They get you know that important over 500, get to five and four in the Big 12 to sit alone in fourth place at the halfway point. Kansas game was kind of a tough ending for us. We thought we'd had a chance in that game, didn't go our way, and then to bounce back here tonight where our backs are against the wall. You know, you hate to use must win and all this in the Big 12, but. You know, to do the things that we want to do as a program and as an organization, we needed to win tonight. And uh, we knew we were going to get Oklahoma's best shot, and we got that in a lot, of, a lot of ways. Now we get excited and get geared back up to play the second half of the Big 12. Uh, I think we were right here last year, I think, 5-4, and four, if I'm not mistaken, and we win nine in a row and cut the nets down. Um, you know, that's, that's the goal. Uh, coach's memory is fuzzy, I guess. All right, check, check that Big 12 standings at the halfway point. Baylor remains on top. One game in front of Kansas. West Virginia in third, as you mentioned, the Red Raiders fourth. After that, we've got a three-way tie for fifth between Oklahoma, Texas, and TCU. Kansas State, Iowa State tied for eighth and Oklahoma State. They got to win, but they're still in tenth. They got them right where they want them. Yeah, exactly. For more on those Longhorns to this point, let's check in with our friends in Austin, Roger Wallace. For this Texas Longhorn team, the formula is pretty simple. They usually play good enough defense to stay in games. The question is the offense. And on Saturday against Iowa State, they had just enough with a 72-68 win, including three-point shooting where they hit 7 of 12. Courtney Ramey scored all 14 of his points in that second half for the Horns' 14th win and second straight. We, we told our guys this is a swing game. It is for Iowa State. It is for us. And uh, it's one we need to go grab just because it's... It, it makes a huge, huge difference, obviously, uh, the feeling you have and, and where you stand, where you sit, um, if you win. So it's a big week. You know, every week's going to be a big week in the Big 12. Then they go to Lawrence on Monday, and they cannot find the range. Four of 24 from three had a two-point lead at the half, but... A 17-4 Kansas run erased that quickly. Longhorns go down 69-58. to And how about this stat for junior Jericho Sims? In these two games this week, he has hit 15 of 17 from the field, grabbed 18 rebounds by far, Texas's most consistent player. And now another tough Saturday-Monday, both at home, Texas Tech Saturday, and Baylor comes in on Monday. That's the story in Austin. Back to you in Lubbock. Thanks, Roger. Let's bring back Phil Mayer from one friend who's far away to one friend <laughs> who's just down the hallway. Okay, Phil, sticking with Texas. So the Longhorns don't light it up offensively really anywhere. But believe it or not, their worst offensive spot on the floor isn't beyond the arc, but it is blank. The free throw line. And not only does Texas Tech not shoot free throws well, they hardly even get to the line. Last in all of college basketball in both free throws attempted and free throws made, and when you think about their rotation, sort of a, a guard-heavy rotation, Jericho Sims doesn't get to the free throw line a lot. Uh, Texas Tech is not going to have to worry as much about giving up those freebies as it does against other teams. And another added bonus from that is that uh, we've seen some Texas Tech players, TJ Holyfield in particular, get in some foul trouble this year. And that, uh, ideally for Texas Tech, won't be as much of an issue with a Longhorns team that does not get to the line. I always say, if there's one way to have success, it's a bunch of guards who can't shoot free throws. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not drafting any of those guys. I hope you guys don't either. All right, Phil, we'll check back in with you when we do our pick three here in a few minutes. Also ahead on Countdown to Tip Off. Eric and I tackle some topics in Crashing the Boards. And still ahead, Ryan Hyatt predicts how this one turns out in the final call.